Our brothers and sisters, as we gather here today, uh, let us think about our duty to tell the world about Islam, to tell the world about the one God, Allah Azza wa Jal, to tell the world about the Quran, which has been revealed as a guidance for all people, to tell the world about our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is our exemplar and theirs. In the Quran, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala tells us uh, in Surah Yasin, the 36th chapter of the Quran, about an ordinary person that could be any one of us. When the messengers came to the people and they were rejected, Allah backed them up with a third messenger. That one was also rejected. The messengers were stoned. But a man came from the uh, farthest region of the city. He came uh, rushing. He's making effort. He said, Oh, my people, follow the messengers. So that could be our message to the people. Follow the messengers in general. Follow our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in particular. Tomorrow, inshallah, we'll be having a dialogue uh, among Muslims and Christians at the university here. And that will be part of my message. By following our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we are following indirectly all of the previous prophets. There are certain things which we are taught uh, in our faith to be the sunnahs of the prophets. Something as simple as clipping our nails. This is one of the sunnahs, not only of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but also of the previous prophets. So when a Muslim man or woman today, when we clip our nails, uh, we are following our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but we're also following Isa Alaihi Salam and Musa Alaihi Salam and Ibrahim Alaihi Salam, all of the great prophets. When a Muslim man wears a beard today, uh, the, we, are, we are following our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and also Isa Alaihi Salam. When a Muslim woman uh, wears a head cover, uh, she is acting like Maryam Alaihi Salam, the mother of Isa Alaihi Salam. So we are connected with all of the great prophets of all time. And our message then to people is going to go to them through our actions of imitating and following the prophets, but through our words as well, like the words of that man in Surah Yasin. In Surah Al-Mu'min, the 40th chapter of the Quran, here too we have the story of an apparently ordinary man who comes forward and boldly proclaims the message in the face of the leadership at the time which was rejecting uh, the message of the prophets. So my brothers and sisters, where is our contribution in, this, in the sphere and in the field of giving the message of Allah? We know from the Quran that there must be among us a group who invites towards what is right and forbids what is wrong. We have religious leadership who are doing uh, that work on our behalf. We have the mufti here. We have the deputy mufti. They are people who enjoin what is right and they forbid what is wrong. We have people who are actively engaged in the field of giving dawah, of inviting people to what is right and what is good. The Quran speaks about these people in the third chapter where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, that Surah Ali Imran, let there be among you an ummah, a group, who invites towards what is good. And let them command what is right. And forbid what is wrong. And they're the ones who are successful. So who are the ones who are going to be successful? Uh, the, these people who command the right, they forbid the wrong, and they invite towards what is good. But the ulama say that anyone who cooperates with that group, supports the group, and gets the work done through their support and backing, 
they also are, um, are among the successful group. So we cannot all be muftis. There's going to be only one mufti in, in our state. But we can support the work of the muftis. 